Hello and welcome to this five minute physics video on specific latent heat. The word latent is a bit of a funny one. It really means hidden. So hidden heat, what's all that about? Well, imagine this setup here. You've got some ice, which is at minus 20 degrees. You put it in a beaker over a Bunsen burner and you stick a thermometer in there and you have a stop clock to time your experiment. So as you'd expect, you switch on your Bunsen burner, it starts adding energy and the temperature rises and it keeps rising up until it gets to zero degrees. But then something a bit strange happens. Although you're adding energy, the Bunsen's still going, the temperature stops rising. As you know, the ice is gonna start melting at zero degrees, turning into water. But we get this strange point where there's no temperature change on the graph, even though we're adding energy. Once all the ice has melted though, the temperature starts rising again. And up it goes, up it goes, until it gets to 100 degrees. And at 100 degrees, the same sort of thing happens, except this time, it goes on for a bit longer. We have, although we're supplying energy, no temperature rise. And that water, of course, is now gonna to start to boil. And once it's all boiled away, all turned into steam, if you could catch the steam, which obviously isn't possible with a beaker, but if you could catch that steam and keep adding energy, the steam would then start heating up again. It was temperature would go up and up and up, and there would be no limit on how hot you could get it. Now, although we have time on our x-axis in this graph, really we should have, or we could have, energy, because that's what's going on. We're adding energy to it. Um, and normally when we add energy to something, the temperature increases. But as you've seen, when we're changing state, when we're going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, then adding energy doesn't actually increase the temperature. Something else is going on. If you look, if we could imagine what's going on, we could look more closely, the particles in the ice would be held together by bonds in between them. And as we add energy, we can start to break those bonds. The bonds in between the particles will be broken and instead of being a solid with a fixed shape, it will change into a liquid and the particles can move freely around. So at these state changes, instead of increasing the temperature, we are breaking bonds if we're talking about a solid melting, or we're overcoming intermolecular forces if we're talking about a liquid boiling. Either way, that energy, instead of increasing the temperature, is increasing what we call the internal energy of the material. Now you could repeat this experiment many, many times with one kilogram of ice, and you'd always get the same amount of energy required to melt that one kilogram. And we'd call that amount of energy the specific latent heat of fusion of the material. Now, the word specific in this case in physics just means a value per kilogram. Okay, so there's nothing weird about that. And as we said, the amount of energy it takes to melt a kilogram of ice is very different to the amount of energy it takes to boil a kilogram of water. So there's a different latent heat, there's a different specific latent heat for fusion, turning the solid into a liquid, as there is for boiling or vaporization, turning the liquid into a gas. As of course you'd expect, there's an equation for this. This is physics after all. And here it is, fairly straightforward. The energy you need for the state change equals the mass of the material you have multiplied by the specific latent heat for that material, okay? Or E equals ML. What you have to be a little bit careful is, as we said before, checking whether you're talking about fusion, solid to liquid, or vaporization, liquid to gas. Okay, so for water, I've put the two values here, and as you can see, they're very, very different. Nearly seven times as much energy is needed to boil water as it is to melt it. You also have to be careful because, as you can see, those values are in kilojoules per kilogram, and quite probably they're gonna ask for the energy in joules. So if you've used kilojoules per kilogram, either convert it into joules, multiply it by a thousand, or remember to give your answer the energy at the end in kilojoules. Now you can reverse the process we've talked about, the experiment we thought through. Um, instead of adding energy, you can remove energy. So you're cooling it down and you get basically the same graph, but backwards. So don't be thrown if you were to be shown that in an exam, it's exactly the same principle. Now to work out the specific latent heat for a material going through a change of state, then you can use the graph to do that. We need to measure how much energy has been transferred, either added if we're heating up and melting, or taken away if we're cooling down, like in this graph here. What you need to do is draw two lines vertically down, one from the start of the change of state and one from the end of the change of state, both of those down to the x-axis. 
Now, the difference between those two numbers will give you the amount of energy that had to be added or taken away for that change of state to happen. Just be a little bit careful because the x-axis might be in kilojoules, it might be in joules. So you need to double check that before you do any calculations with it. Um, to find the specific latent heat, we just need to use the um, equation, but rearranged. So we do the energy divided by the mass gives us the specific latent heat. So to summarize, whenever we change the state of material, we have to add energy or take energy away, but that doesn't cause a change in temperature. What it does do is change the internal energy of the material, and that relates to bonds being formed or bonds being broken. The energy that we need to completely change the state of one kilogram of a substance without any temperature change at all is called the specific latent heat. Most materials will have two specific latent heats, one for fusion, melting, and one for vaporization. Thanks for watching this five minute physics video. Please subscribe and keep up to date with new videos as they get added. Have a good day.